Welcome back to my wood shop. Uh, hope you had a great day. Uh, today we're going to get some make some wood shavings. Uh, uh, one of one of my classes I used to teach is uh, was I used to show them how to make a honey dipper, and that's what we made in class. It's a very simple project if you're just beginning in wood turning. It's a really good project because you use some different tools, uh, and what we need is just a block of maple. Uh, I want a tight grain. Anytime I use something for food, I want a tight grain wood, and maple's a really good wood. It's an easy wood to turn. So uh, let's go over to the lathe and start making some shavings. And this is what we're going to make. Uh, this is the tools that we're going to use today to turn this honey dipper. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, say to you that those of you who have got carbide tips, you can do this project with carbide tip tools. Uh, I might pick up one while we're doing this thing, just to uh, you maybe uh, get the handle out of it, uh, just to show you that you can use these. But we will use a roughing gouge uh, to rough this blank out. I'll use a skew, and a skew is good for detail work right there. And then, of course, we're going to use a parting tool. Uh, this is a parting tool. And it's a kind of a narrow parting tool. It, it's a really good tool uh, to make the um, uh, grooves in the honey dipper. So uh, we also have a detail gouge, a uh, spindle gouge, and then I have a bigger uh, spindle gouge. Of course, we you know we got your hammer and uh, we're going to use a spur. Uh, you got a marking gauge. Them are always handy to put your uh, marks on the end of the wood like this. Uh, that's always really handy. Uh, and then we're going to use a set of calipers a lot. The thing is, is that a lot of times when you're making spindles, uh, chair legs or uh, rungs or something in a stair, uh, newel post, uh, you need calipers to measure what you want to turn down to. And we're going to be doing that today too. So this is something that uh, uh, you need to get your grips on on what kind of tools you got. I can use different tools and different settings. Um, so you pick and choose your tools and we'll turn this honey dipper. Let's go to the lathe. Okay, let me put, get my face shield down here. Um, uh, first thing we're gonna do is we got this tool rest height at the uh, center axis. I'm gonna use the roughing gouge first and just rough this blank out. Uh, I just wanna get it round. So here we go, we're gonna turn this lathe on. Uh, I wanna stand aside. And uh, let's crank this thing on up. I got everything tightened down. And I'm hitting right now about a thousand RPM. So uh, let's, let's get this thing rounded out. Again, if you remember in class, the ones that's been in my classes, uh, I've got three points of contact. I got my elbow in here, my palms down on the tool wrist, and right over here at my side, uh, I have my uh, hand and my tool buried into my side. And I'm just drawing a straight line across this block of wood. And if you do this, uh, when you first start now, you'll learn to draw a straight line across any block of wood that you're trying to turn. I line my foot up with this post right here, and I shift my hips to my right, and I just take them to the left. I'm not pushing in. All I'm doing is going to my left. Okay, once we uh, get away from that tool rest a little bit, and we've almost got this thing rounded out, so I slide the tool rest in. I don't have to change my height because I've already got it set. Let's uh, far back up and let's get this thing finished out.
Okay. Uh, if you look over, when you're setting this up, if you look over the uh, tool rest and line it up with your bed down there, you can actually see that it's lined up with the center axis. So as I'm riding my hand across this tool rest back and forth, uh, it's this cutting edge is cutting on the center axis. And that's what you want because uh, you want a good straight line across the bed. You can actually smooth out a blank. I'm going to show you here in a second that you can take this tool and follow the wing right there and you can put your thumb on the inside of the flute and your index finger riding on the tool rest. You can actually do a smooth cut and you can see the difference. I'm going to stop the lathe right here so you can see the difference in the cut right here versus the rough cut. And so you can really smooth out a piece uh, just by using this smooth cut, just like this right here. Taking that wing, following it along, and just sliding across that piece of wood. All the way to the end. And see, I've got this uh, index finger down here riding on this tool rest as a gauge. I can't, I, I'm not pushing in. All I'm doing is sliding to my left, and that gives me a good clean cut. Look at that, all the way across through there. Now, the first thing I want to do, let me grab my uh, pencil, and I want to grab my uh, calipers. <clears throat> and I want to just lay them right here so uh, I can keep them right here handy. Uh, now, I want to mark the starting and stopping point of this uh, honey dipper. So let's turn the lathe on. And I'm going to get me a starting point right there. I'm going to get me a stopping point right there. So that's where my honey dipper is going to lay. Uh, I stop and I look at the piece of wood. And make sure there's no knots or anything in there. Because sometimes I might want to flip this piece around depending on the, the wood. And this one here looks pretty decent. <coughs> so the first thing I do is I take my calipers right here. And I measure the barrel of that honey dipper right there. On the outside of these lines, I know the honey dipper is on the inside of it, but on the outside of these lines, I want to take this wood with my parting tool down to that thickness. Here's what we do. <coughs> All right. Remember, our tool, um, parting tool, we don't want it to um, hit up over that corner. So we go straight in. And we go to this other side, then we're going to measure them. I always make two cuts. That just opens it up a little bit. And especially when you're learning, you just uh, you want to kind of take this and shut the lathe off while you're checking these. It's just a safe, safety feature, uh, especially while you're learning. Yeah, I know I need a little bit more on this one. And yeah, let's check them again. That one's just a little bit loose. And that one's almost perfect right there. Let me just take a little bit more. That's perfect. That'll work good. This one here is just a little bit sloppy, but I can leave it a little bit proud when I take it down, and I'll be fine. That's why you do it on the outside, so if you get one just a little bit too small, you can leave it a little bit big as, on your true um, uh, project that you're working on. So now what we want to do is take all of this wood down to that size, that diameter right there. So I'll pick my roughing gouge back up, and here we go. And 
on these little pieces. I just go on and knock them down a little bit just to get them out of my way. Now, as I get down here close, I want to double check my, uh, my my tool rest to make sure it's parallel, and it is. And now I can make some smooth cuts along here and take this on down. Remember, this side was a little bit smaller than the other. I think I'm good right there. Uh, I'll pick up my parting tool and I'll just go on and remark these since I'm down to the, since I'm down to the diameter that I want it. I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. Just like that. Okay. Pick up my pencil and my honey dipper. And I'm going to have the barrel down at this end. I uh, had a little bit of a dark spot up there that might have been a knot. I'd rather for it to be down here in the handle part. So, I got the end marked with uh, the parting tool. And I want to go through here and I want to mark my high spots and my low spots on, on this honey dipper. There's the next high spot. Then if you got a high spot, you got a low spot. So I mark that. And I come up into the high spot. That will take care of this part. I know this handle is low spot, so I'll come down here to my next high spot. And then I have a low spot, just like that. And I come up to the high spot. And then I go over here to the end, and I go to the first high spot off of the end of it. Now, one thing I want to do is I don't want to mess with the barrel right now. I, I, I do that the last part. Uh, so I've got my high spots and low spots marked. The first thing I want to go is I pick up my skew, and I'm going to go in here, and I want to highlight my low spots so I don't lose track of it. If you go to mark your low spots up, you'll keep track of that as you're doing it. And this would be the skew, and I know that's the low spot right there. So I just come in, and I will just carve out a V, just like that. I come over to my other low spot and I put it back up there to make sure I don't make a mistake. And I come up here and I make a V, just like this. And it's a very simple process. And just like that. So I know that these are the low spots, and this whole project is that I want to I, I want to make uh, this hang on a minute, I just dropped the tool. Uh, lay it over here out of my way. Uh, now, I, I want to carve out, I just want to focus on this part of it, where the ball is. And uh, this is more of a bugle shape, right here. So I'm going to go on and start carving this out. Uh, and, you know, one thing about making an item like this, uh, it doesn't have to be exact. It can be a little bit off. So, uh, let's pick up my uh, detail gouge. And... I can go over here. I'll, this is this is the first high spot. So I'll come over here. I will split the difference right there, and I will kind of roll that off just like that. Now, how I'm doing that is that I ride that heel. When I pick up some shavings, I, I want to turn that tool to where, and then at the same time I'm turning it over, I want to be lifting the handle to around that ball on there. Then I come back over here, and I'll take another part of it. And you can start to see 
how I can develop a ball right there on the end of that. Come back to where the high spot is. And I will cut down in there just like that. So you can see that that is starting to take shape there. Now I'll come over here and I want to roll this ball off the opposite way. And I just do it the opposite. Just kind of roll that down in there as I'm going. I'm Look how I'm lifting my handle right here. I'm lifting it up as I'm rolling it down. What that does for you, it allows these wings to escape down into that valley. Just like this. Watch here. Here we go. We pick up some shavings right there. And I'm going off down into the valley just like that. And now I can come back up here and I can just kind of round that high spot off. Get rid of my pencil mark. Just like that. And let's, let's take it down just a little bit more. Just like that. I round it back and forth. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now we'll come over here right where our bugle is going to be. And we do the same thing. Now this is not as rounded. It's more of a chamfer. Uh, so let's go in here and we'll give them back and we'll get on that mark. That was our high spot. And let's take this off into the valley. Now let's just make come back and just shape that a little bit. Make that valley just a little bit deeper. Just like that. That looks pretty, pretty darn good right there. Alright, now I'm going to bypass the handle part here in a minute uh, and we'll come back to it. The next part, I want to take this section right here, and I, I got my low spot, so this is more of a, like a tulip bulb shape. So, I come over here, pick up my shape, and I want to kind of round this bulb out. Just like that. And I come over here on the, right below the barrel, and I do the same thing. Now this is, I'm doing this all with a uh, detail spindle gouge. And this tool right here, uh, I ordered from uh, Cindy DeRosa, and very good turner. Uh, I think she's from uh, out in Colorado. Uh, and it's a very good tool. I think Doug Thompson's the one that made this tool for her, and she sells these things, and it's a very good tool. When you order it, um, you get these little ferrules on here, uh, if you're going and doing some traveling or something, you can take this out, stick this back into the handle, the sharp part, and it won't get dull once you've got it sharp um, and keep from cutting you or, or poking a hole in your bag or whatever. This is a really good tool. I like it, and it's a very good detail gouge. So, once I got that done, I want to come over here to the end of it, and I just want to kind of round that off. And I, in the same process, I take about half of the wood, come back, and I want to sneak up on it. Just like this. Here we go. And you can see how that's really taking a nice shape right there uh, using this detail gouge. And, and I go off down into the valley, and each time I'm going around that curve, I'm lifting my handle. And that just really guides that tool right down into the valley right there. Okay, got one little ridge in there. And let's clean it all up. One last cut right there, and there it is, right there. And that looks pretty good. So we got everything but the uh, handle laid out. So we'll come back and shape up a little bit right here in this area. I'm going to concave that uh, handle. And one tool that you can use, you can use your carbide tip. You start right here in the middle, and just kind of go back and forth, just like this. Carve out a handle. And I'm going to show you a little trick right here in a minute. And once I get this, let's see if it uh, will show up. And I can use that. Uh, another tool that I can use is I can actually use my roughing gals. I can cut down that valley. And one thing about that, it really makes a good clean cut down in there, even though it's a roughing gouge. Let's, let's turn this lathe off, and I want to talk to you just a little bit. Uh, 
let me grab my pencil here and I want to let me get this out maybe you can hear me better uh, if you I don't know that you can see it but I'm going to draw it the grain right here comes down to a V right there and it comes down to a V right here comes down to a V right there and it comes down the same right here now this is the grain direction and you can see these things pointing down to the center what you want to do is as you're cutting this handle out and anytime you're cutting you want to go down to the middle of this handle because what happens right there if you come back up you're kind of lifting this uh, grain back up off of there and sometimes you can chip it out um, so that's that's something that you really want to focus on uh, always go downhill 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 coming back up you're going against the grain and, and it's going to you could tear it chip it out tear it out and it's going to be more sanding to do so you don't want that so let's go on and knock this down with my roughing gouge one thing i'm doing i'm going to take i'm going to take this uh handle right here on both ends i'm going to take them down a little bit then we'll come back and re refine them because i don't want it to look bulky so I want it to kind of look be smaller than my barrel. So I go on and take these down and see how I'm coming down the hill, all the way down into the valley there. Just like that. Just like that. And there we go. Now, uh, let me uh, grab my detail gouge here. And I want to uh, make this, define this bulb again since I made it smaller. So I'm going to come back here. Just like that. And I'm, going, I'm actually going to take a little bit deeper. I just like that a little bit better. I'm going to have to find my pencil here. All, all on this bulb, I want to take and I'm going to take it back there. Just like that. Okay. Now. Tool's getting dull, it's going to need to be sharpened, so I'm going to pick this one up and just finish off. Just like that. I'm going to show you another way. Uh, a lot of times, I, t I you can take this uh, skew and you can actually use this like a negative rake scraper and just kind of shape that and that really really can fine-tune some of your turnings using this tool uh, if I want to make that sharper point down in there just come in there just like that uh, and I, kinda, I like that that looks pretty good so uh, let's turn the lathe off and let me find some sandpaper here uh, see what we got here This is a 240. It don't take much to sand these things. I'm going to use a 150 and a 240. Let's see what this one is. Here's a 150. I'll show you how to sand this up right fast. And I usually I usually go on and sand a little bit before I finish the barrel out just to smooth everything up. Take and pull the uh, tool rest back so you don't get your fingers caught in between it. And just kind of rough this out like this. And any imperfection that's sanding will just take them right out of there. And of course, this one here was pretty smooth anyway. I go on and uh, sand the barrel down. I fold my sandpaper just like that and get down in these little cre creases, the valleys, and make sure you sand them out. Sand this ball up good. Fold, get down on that side there. Let 
Let's turn it off and take a peek at it. I don't have any tool marks in there. That's really, really good. And uh, I'm going to take and kind of bear down right in that handle because I did see a tool mark right there. Okay, I'll switch off to my uh, 240 grit and we'll sand it up. Hit all the top high spots first, crease my sandpaper, hit the valleys, round off the edges, up here on this handle, just like that. And these little projects like here, it don't take much. Just like that. Boy, that sanded up really nice. No tool marks in it. Um, so, now what we want to do, we want to slide our tool rest back in. And we're going to take care of this, uh, the barrel. We're going to put our grooves in there. Here's a good way to put the grooves in. Uh, and I want to do it with a pencil first before I actually cut them. Just like this. All right. I go in here and I want to color in where I'm going to cut. And I can actually look over the top of this and I can line it up pretty straight and I can pick wherever I want on here. And I want it to look kind of uniform and that looks pretty darn good. So, now we just pick up our parting tool, if I can find it, there we go. Now, put my shield down, and what I want to do is that I actually want to kind of look at the white spots, and I want them to kind of be equal. So, if one is bigger than the other one, I'll go in just like that. And I pick up the difference. Now, once I go in, I want to go all the way to my desired depth, just like that. Come back here. And take it all the way down, just like that. Okay? One thing I want to show you here, I am coming in on my first part of this as a straight cut. Right here. And then as I get into it, I drop my handle and use more of a feeling cut. And then I lift my handle up as it's going in to my desired depth. Just like that. Now, I want to explain something to you. And the reason why I do that, if you go in straight on, you're not going to tear out as much. If I was going in up at this angle, it would tear out on both sides right there. You just have a little bit more sanding. So if you go straight in, it doesn't have as much tear out. That's very important when you're doing something like this. It's very fine detail. Okay, let's get this other one knocked out. Straight in, just like that. Drop my handle a little bit. And I bring my handle back up and all the way down to my desired bed, just like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. They're all level in there. And then we will pay, pick up our uh, sandpaper. And we just kind of knock over the corners, just like this. Sandpaper shouldn't be anything negative. It's just another tool to get you to the finished product. And you got to have all the tools to work together. Pick up my 240, come over here on some fresh paper, and I'll just kind of sand them out, get it smooth. One little pencil mark there, now it's gone. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right, now, what I want to do now is that I want to come over here, and I want to start to, uh, I want to start to take this off. 
I'm not going to take it all the way off. I'm going to work on both the ends at the same time uh, simultaneously here. Come over to this side. And this one back here, I'm going to kind of curve it around where that ball is. If you see the angle of my parting tool, I'm just kind of taking this on around. I can take the edge of that tool and really, really shape it right there, and that looks pretty good. Just using that edge of that tool just to knock some sh uh, corners off of there. I'm going to come back over and i work on this thing. Take my sandpaper, kind of smooth it out there a little bit. I don't want any tool marks. Kind of feather it in there. I'll come over on this end. I can sand it a little bit. Pick, pick my parting tool up. Now, if I lay my hand right up here on this and cradle that in my hand right there, I can go on and part this off. One thing I like to do sometimes is uh, I will take my skew. Because I can get a really cleaner cut right there. Just like that. Take it out of the lathe, and we got it parted off right there. Now, if I can find my saw, be right back. Let me get my saw. Lay this up here. I let that saw ride against my thumbnail there, and I can pretty much cut this off pretty straight across to there. You don't want to break them off because if you break them off, you'll break fibers back into the your uh, utensil. So, you know, I just want to saw them off just like this. Just like that, very easy. And then, back this out of the way, and we can do this right here, where you can watch. I will lay, lay my sandpaper down on there. And I got a little bit of a, a burr right there, where that thing come off. And I can sand it out, just like that. I can come over to the other end. And I can sand it out, just like that. Just kind of round it off. Makes a really, really good finish. Now, just like that, that makes a nice honey dipper, don't you think? Uh, one thing I did want to do, I just want to talk a little bit about finish. I want to use butcher block oil on these. Uh, it's more or less a vegetable oil type. Uh, and the reason why I use that is because it, it is pretty much food safe. Anybody can be allergic to anything. But one thing I really want to caution you on, on something like this or anything that anybody's going to eat out of, I never use anything with walnut oil. Walnut oil, it, it, to most people, it's going to be food safe. But... I got a grandson that uh, is allergic to peanuts, and uh, actually he's allergic to all nuts. 
he's allergic more to walnuts than he is peanuts. So people think, well, just because they're allergic to peanuts, the, the other nuts are all right. That's not so. Walnut oil can actually uh, kill somebody that is uh, allergic to this stuff. So I never want to take that chance with anybody. So I always use uh, butcher block oil on my honey dippers. Uh, some people will, you know, beg to differ on that, but uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, see you back at the wood stove.